G'day viewers. In this segment we'll talk about the additive increase multiplicative decrease algorithm. So our general topic here is bandwidth allocation. Additive increase multiplicative decrease or AIMD is one control law which has attractive properties for bandwidth allocation, which is why we're going to look at it in detail. Before we do that, I just want to remind you of some context for where we are on bandwidth allocation. What we're trying to do here in our network is allocate some of the capacity of the network to senders. And we want an allocation to be efficient in that it's going to use all of the network, but not more than is there and cause congestion and fair. We've already talked about fairness. Now, any solution here is going to use feedback from the network layer because that's how we'll find out if the network is congested or if there's spare capacity. And it's also going to use uh, the transport layer because that's the layer that controls the load that's often into the network. We know all of this before. What we don't know is just how we should actually perform a bandwidth allocation. There are actually lots of different ways if you're designing the network from scratch that you might allocate its bandwidth. You could use um, a design which is either open loop or closed loop. Open loop simply means that ahead of time you simply come up with an allocation, you make reservations for how much bandwidth the different flow is going to get at a certain route or in a certain time and then it's done. Closed loop is where we're using feedback to adapt and vary the amount of uh, capacity which different flows are assigned over time depending on what's available in the network and who else wants to send. We could have allocation mechanisms that are more host based or more network based whereby whether they're host or network based I really mean which party is responsible for setting and enforcing the allocation. Is that something the network should do or is that something the host should do? This has implications by the way for um, uh, you, you know how the scheme works in uh, different situations. For instance if the network is enforcing it the network's really in control and users can't undermine the network. If the hosts are setting the bandwidth allocations in some ways, then really they better behave in a good way for the network or they might have an adverse effect on the whole network and there's nothing much the network can do about it. So these things matter at a high level. And also in terms of the allocation, we can have an allocation expressed either in terms of the size of the sliding window or is as an absolute rate such as one packet per second directly. Both of these are going to provide us with ways of controlling the amount of network capacity that's used by a sender. TCP in this, in this sort of schema or framework is a closed loop host driven window based bandwidth allocation scheme and that's where we're going to look because we're mostly going to study TCP. This is the scheme that's been successful and is used in the internet. Okay, so this just says that we're, where we're going to look. Um, now, as far as the network layer and the transport layer are concerned, the network layer is going to return feedback on the current allocation to the senders, and we're going to assume that the network layer will at least tell the senders if there is congestion or not. So a binary signal will do. That's this. The transport layer is going to adjust the sender's behavior. We've said that here we'll use a window, a sliding window. Um, and it's going to adjust it in response to the feedback. How the senders decide to adapt the window over time, what the rules for the adaptation is, is called a control law. And that brings us to AIMD, Additive Increase Multiplicative Decrease. AIMD is a control law for doing this adaptation. And it's a control law which has some attractive properties because it can help us get to an efficient and fair allocation. In AIMD, Hosts additively increase the rate by adjusting the window size, say, by adding something to it, while the network is not congested. That's the AI part. And then hosts multiplicatively decrease the rate by changing the sliding window, reducing it, when the network enters a congested state. And that's it. This algorithm repeats, additively increasing until you run into congestion, then multiplicatively decreasing to get away from it, on and on and on, and that's that's AIMD. TCP uses the AIMD algorithm. All of the TCP different mechanisms really exist to implement AIMD. 
Now, just to see why AIMD is any good, let's use the AIMD game to see how it works. Here's the game. The game is to consider a very simple network. There are these two hosts, host one and host two. <clears throat> you can see here they're attached to the network and they're sharing a link here, a link of one unit. This is the bottleneck for both of those links. So somehow host one and host two are going to have to agree amongst themselves who gets how much of that different link. But the rub, and this is where it's a little tricky and, and follows uh, the way bandwidth allocation works in practice, is that host one and host two can't talk to one another directly to sort that out. They might not even know who the other party is who they're sharing the link with. If there's just one other person or ten other people and so forth. So somehow they're going to have to work out their bandwidth allocation without talking to one another directly. All they have to help them work things out is that the net, the router or the network is going to provide binary feedback, a zero one signal to tell the host whether the network is congested or not. So the AIMD game takes place on this plane. This plane represents all of the possible bandwidth allocations. So uh, a point here, for instance, has a bandwidth allocation of it looks like about 0.5 to host 2 and it says 0.1 maybe to host 1 on this particular point. And uh, all sorts of different points on that plane just provide different amounts of bandwidth to host 1 or host 2. There are several key uh, different features of this diagram. So we've talked about a fair and efficient allocation. What are they? This line, and this is like at 45 degrees, the y equals x, this is fair. And it's fair in this simple setting because along this line host 1 and host 2 get an equal amount of bandwidth. Maybe they both get 0.3 units or 0.4 or 0.5. Whatever it is, it's fair. This other line here is the efficiency line. This is an efficient network allocation. This is the line such that the host 1 and host 2 values sum to 1 unit. So x plus y is equal to 1. Now since 1 is the total allocation, if host 1 and host 2's bandwidth together sum up to 1, they're using all of the network capacity and the network is operating efficiently. Down here at this point I did, they add up to 0.6. So we've kind of left 40% of the network capacity on the table. We're not running efficiently. The intersection is the optimal point that's both fair and efficient. This is where we want to get. And the plane beyond the efficiency line is congestion. Congestion occurs as soon as you go into this territory. You can't sustain any point that is above here because you're sending more traffic into the network than it can handle. It will all get dropped on the floor. So, um, oh, and what I also have to tell you is what AIMD looks like in this diagram. If we take a point, let's just take a point here, additive increase is going to add a fixed amount of bandwidth to both hosts. So that's going to take us along the line at 45 degrees. We're adding, you know, let's just say 0.1 to every, to host one and host two, it takes us up there. Multiplicative decrease on the other hand, is going to uh, lop a fraction, the same fraction, off of both host 1 and host 2. We could, for instance, reduce their bandwidth allocations both by 25%. Now, if, um, if one of them had a large bandwidth allocation with multiplicative decrease, it's going to lose a bigger portion than the other one. It turns out that a multiplicative decrease portion effectively takes you back on a line towards the origin. You can see from here for host 2, host 2 had a smaller amount of bandwidth here. So on this line towards the origin it lost just a little bit. Host 1 on the other hand had quite a large allocation. So it down this line lost a lot more. So they're both losing proportionally to their magnitude. And this is multiplicative decrease. Visually, it's a line pointing towards the origin. So here's, here is that uh, game cleaned up for all of the points, and I've written the equations for some of the lines. At this point, you might be wondering what the game is and whether it's any fun at all. Well, here's how it works. 
To play the AI, AIMD game, you pick a point, any point along here, as a starting point. It's up to you, it's part of the game. And then you change the allocation according to the rules of additive, increase, multiplicative, decrease, and you see where you end up. Let's see what happens from here. What's going to happen? Well, we additively increase, and that goes up at 45 degrees. Eventually, we will um, become congested, and the network will tell us that it's congested. For all of these points, the network was saying, not congested, not congested, not congested. Sometime after we cross, it will say congested. We could do it immediately, but often we'll move in a more sizable increments, so there'll, so there'll be a little bit of going to and fro. At that point, we do the multiplicative decrease. Oops, that's my somewhat shaky line down to the origin. Now we're below it, we do additive increase again. Multiplicative decrease, additive increase, multiplicative decrease. Can you see where we're going? It's a little hard, but see these are pointing towards the origin. We're heading towards this point. If you play the AIMD game, from any point, you will end up at a fair and efficient allocation. Let me just clean that up a little bit so you can see it. These different lines from multiplicative decrease should all be pointing towards the origin. So you can see that their slope is changing. Okay, so AIMD, the point here is that it will always converge to a good allocation no matter where you start. That's pretty handy in a scheme. If we also look at what's happening for any particular host, host 1 or host 2, over time, this axis is now time, not the other host, and we look at the, the allocation of the rate, that rate will be going through a sawtooth pattern. It will go up, that's the additive increase, then it will suddenly go down all at once. That was the multiplicative decrease. And here it will go up again, additive increase, multiplicative decrease. And that must mean that the place we wanted to get to, this was probably, um, this was probably the uh, more efficient allocation. Right in the middle, fair and efficient. Right there. This sawtooth pattern, this is what we're getting when we have a, it looks like the multiplicative decrease might be 50% here and the additive increase is just something that happens slowly over time. But this is a sawtooth pattern and uh, we'll see later that TCP produces a TCP sawtooth which is the sign of an AIMD allocation. Okay, so I'll just talk briefly about some of the properties of AIMD. I've been hammering in that it converges to an allocation that's fair and efficient when you run it, no matter where you start from. It might not seem very interesting on that small topology, but this is going to hold for more general topologies and larger numbers of flows playing this game together, even though everyone is acting independently and only with a little bit of feedback from the network. They don't know who they're competing against, they don't know who has how much other bandwidth, they just know if the network's congested or not. They follow this rule, AIMD, everyone ends up at a good allocation for the network. It will seem more uh, interesting to you if you actually try on that game some other control rules. If you try multiplicative increase, additive decrease, or any of these other combinations, multiplicative increase, multiplicative decrease, or, oops, and the one other, other one that's missing that I shouldn't say here is additive increase, additive, additive decrease then you'll find that none of these other allocations converge to a good operating point. Some of them just go to and fro, others convert, uh, sorry, diverge, so they actually move away to a worse allocation. And we're doing all of this requiring really very little, just this binary feedback from the network about whether it's congested or not. So AIMD is quite useful. Just to finish up this segment, I'll talk very briefly about feedback signals. We said the network gives you feedback, but I never really said what kind of feedback that was. Well, there are several different possible signals that you might use to get feedback from the network. They all have their different pros and cons. One of the signals you might lose is simply packet loss. Uh, if packets are lost, that's really a signal from the network that it's congested because the queues are filled up. That's how packet loss occurs. Packet loss, uh, and, and I've listed here in the middle column just some examples of um, uh, transport protocols that use this signal as part of their congestion control scheme. Packet loss is good in some respects. It's a pretty hard signal to get wrong or miss.
because a, it's hard to build a router that doesn't drop packets under overload. Eventually it has to. The con, the, the disadvantage of the scheme is that, that you hear about congestion late. So you really hear about congestion after it's happened and the queue's full and the packet's dropped, and even a little after that, because it takes a little while from the acts to work out, or timeouts to work out that something's gone wrong. Alternatively, you might use packet delay. We said as you approach congestion, the delays through the network tend to jump up. If you did this, you would get to hear about congestion more early. That, that's good. Uh, the downside is just that you need to infer congestions from the timings and it can be a bit of an implicit and a noisy signal because delay depends on lots of things. So we're not really getting a very clean signal from the network, we're just having to work a little hard to hear it. Finally, you might also build a network in which the routers directly gave you an indication and just told you by sending a message that, hey, the network's congested. In this way, you would hear about congestion early, as early as the router could find it. Um, the downside is just that now we actually require routers to do something to help us with the feedback signal, whereas delaying packets or dropping them was something that they sort of had to do, it was no extra work. In the middle columns here, I have examples of just um, transport protocols that use all of these different approaches. It turns out that over time, congestion control is diversified. And there are many different flavors of transport protocols. For instance, TCP Reno and Cubic TCP, which is used in Linux, are mostly based on packet loss as the signal. Whereas uh, Compound TCP, that's now the TCP which is used by default on Windows, uses packet delay information as a congestion signal. And finally, using a scheme we'll look at called explicit congestion notification, um, TCP can use router indications of congestion. So there are all sorts of different congestion designs. Okay, but our point for right now is about the AIMD scheme, and shortly we'll look at how TCP goes about realizing AIMD.